Okay, now let's see how Magnus Carlsen, the current world chess champion, used the wing gambit to crush five GMs who were responding with the Sicilian defense. So the first victim goes by the name GM Alexis Serrana, a 26.75 rated GM from Russia. So let's see how this game went. Now before I continue, I should mention that these games were played on leeches. And the time controls for all the games were 1 minute for each player. But hey, that's not the reason why you should skip this video because when these guys are playing bullet chess, it's more like you and I playing a rapid match. Because you have to understand that these guys play theory. And oftentimes the first 20 moves they make is all theory. I tested these games on Stockfish and the moves were just superb. So I hope you will learn something from Carson's way of playing the wing gambit and not the way you play it. So, GM Alexis Sarana, whose FIDE rating is 26.75 at the time of this recording, goes by the name GM May 6E next time and is rated 29.76 on leeches. And as you can see here, we have Dr. Nikenstein, who is obviously Magnus Carlsen, and he is rated 32.20 at the time of this recording on leeches. So as usual, Magnus Carlsen started with pawn to e4, then Alexi responded with pawn to c5, the Sicilian defense. So I bet what Alexi was expecting to see from Magnus was knight to f3, just a normal way of playing the Sicilian defense, but here Magnus surprised Alexi by playing pawn to b4, which is the wing gambit. So here, the most common response by black, believe it or not, is the pawn takes on b4. And that's what Alexi did here. So Alexi took on b4, and here you can see that uh, we are aiming to uh, put our pawns on the center so that we can have a strong center. Then Magnus played pawn to a3, intending to shift uh, black's attention away from the center. For example, if black took on a3, Magnus would have taken with the bishop and uh, eyeballing the whole of this diagonal up to f8. So in this position, according to Stockfish, uh, pawn to e5 is the best response. However, Alexa responded with knight to f6, then e5 by Magnus Carlsen attacking the knight immediately, then knight d5 by Alexi, and then finally Magnus took on b4 with his pawn, and Alexi took back with the knight. The knight f3 by Magnus, e6 by Alexi, c3 by Magnus just trying to chase this knight away, knight for c6 by Alexi, d4 by Magnus. Now you can see Magnus has completed his pawn chain on the center and this looks awesome for white. Now I should pause a little bit here and mention to say that this is our primary goal in the wing gambit. We want to have a solid uh, center and uh, believe it or not, Black's B pawn won't go anywhere. Oftentimes, Black's B pawn is traded with our C pawn. And the A pawn does not go anywhere because it is overwhelmed by our defense. There are just too many minor pieces that are going to attack this pawn. So just like I said in my previous video on the wing gambit, the best way to view the wing gambit is by imagining uh, that you are playing the Benko gambit in reverse. So the game continued as follows. Uh, Alexi responded with pawn to D6, then e takes d6 and this is a very crucial move whenever you see this d6 pawn it's high time you trade it with your e pawn because you don't want your center pawns to be destabilized so always remember this and that's why magnus took on d6 then after bishop takes on d6 bishop d3 by magnus i pulling the h7 square then short castle by black short castle by white and then the game went as follows knight d7 by alexi just a, a natural developing move then knight bd2 by magnus carlsen the plan for magnus is very simple he wants to put his knight on e4 and then later on put it on g3 so e5 by alexi was played another crucial moment here comes it would be a mistake if magnus took on e5 because by taking on e5 what you are doing you are helping black to develop his knight and opening the way for the bishop so in other words, you are just helping black to develop his pieces that are badly placed. And that's why in this position, Magnus Carlsen, first of all, attacked the bishop on d6 by playing knight to e4, and then bishop c7 by black, and only then Magnus played d5, not taking on e5. Reason is to keep the tension on the center, and again, you can see how Magnus plays the wing gambit by still holding on to his center pawns. He just doesn't want to trade them so easily. Alexi played knight f5 here. 
Then Magnus from here played pawn to d6. The pawn on d6 cannot be taken because it is defended by the knight on e4. So black played bishop b6, knight fg5 by Magnus Carlsen. And you can already see the pressure here. Remember, Magnus Carlsen is playing against a GM, a strong GM. And already he has this position where his bishop is uh, eyeballing the h7 square. The knight is also eyeballing the h7 square. And he is also intending to uh, put his queen on h5. So you can see how powerful the wing gambit can be, even against strong players h6 was played by alexi then magnus played queen h5 anyways because black cannot take this knight on g5 because magnus would have simply taken with his knight which is on e4 threatening checkmate on h7 so for this reason alexi played f5 trying to chase away the knight on e4 so that it can go somewhere now this position is quite tricky you guys because in this position it looks like magnus carlsen can play queen to g6 threatening a uh, checkmate on h7 but the problem here is that if queen to g6 aiming to checkmate on h7 then black is going to take the knight on g5 and then if uh, magnus carlsen plays knight takes on g5 aiming to checkmate black alexi can go knight to f6 and there is no checkmate or whatsoever now you know the level at which these guys uh, play chess even when they are playing bullet chess so that's why in this position magnus carlsen knew that the only way to continue is to go bishop c4 checking the king on g8 so that queen to g6 can now be available but the problem is with this knight here because this knight is guarding the c4 square and that's why even when magnus had 41 seconds believe it or not he found the best response according to stockfish so from here magnus carlsen unleashed the move rook takes on a5 and here by the arrows you can see that if black takes on a5 then he's going to lose immediately because of bishop check and then queen to g6 and similarly if uh, black takes uh, on g5 he's going to lose with bishop check again and there is no defense and that's why alexi being a strong gm as well captured the knight on e4 and then Carlsen played bishop c4 check king h8 was played by alexi then queen g6 knight f6 was played by alexi rook takes on e5 by magnus Carlsen. queen takes on d6 now i should mention to say in this position magnus played a very bad move which gave black a minus five advantage what magnus was supposed to do in this position was to capture the pawn on e4 but because he had less time magnus went rook e8 this is a bad move because now black can take on g5 with his pawn and black was winning in this position if he only had to find bishop a5 which is an indian move however black played bishop e6 then rook takes on e6 and after a desperate move bishop takes on f2 check magnus moved his king to h1 and went on to win the game in style because after rook takes on f6 black can now checkmate on h7 if pawn takes let's say magnus would have played queen h6 check and then the only valid move was going to be queen h7 and then and then capture on h7 checkmate so this is one example in which uh, you can play the wing gambit just like magnus carlsen now let's go to the next game now the next game was between magnus carlsen and zigalko seji i bet i'm pronouncing that right if i did not uh, pronounce this name correctly please uh, forgive me but seji is currently a 2572 rated gm from europe he's also an active player on leeches in this game as well magna started with pawn to e4 then seji responded with uh, pawn to c5 the sicilian then in this game magnus carlsen did not play pawn to b4 right away he delayed the move pawn to b4 and instead played knight to f3 this can sometimes uh, transpose into the accelerated wing gambit or the so-called delayed wing gambit or or the smear of gambit whatever you can call it so knight to c6 was played by seji the idea was just to stop magnus uh, from playing pawn to b4 since there are two pieces uh, the pawn and the knight attacking the b4 square but <laughs> wait a second that's what magnus carlsen wanted because he still wanted to play the wing gambit even in this position magnus went on to play pawn to b4 
So the plan is very simple. Again, Magnus just wants to arrange his uh, center pawns properly. He wants to solidify the center by shifting uh, Black's attention away from the center. So the most popular move here is a Black taking with his pawn, but it's not much of a stretch even if black takes with his knight because if black takes with a knight on b4 magnus would have still continued with pawn to c3 then after knight c6 uh, magnus would have played pawn to d4 c takes on d4 c takes on d4 and you can see uh, black still has uh, the two center pawns and uh, the lines are very open he has uh, too much space and position here is almost equal but i would prefer having white pieces in this uh, position so instead of uh, knight taking on b4, Sergi took with his pawn on b4. And then d4 was played by Magnus again having these two center pawns. So you know the whole idea behind the wing gambit is to solidify the center just to put uh, your pawns on the center properly and uh, be quick in developing your moves. So pawn to d5 was played by Seji. Magnus took on d5. Then queen takes on d5. C4 was played by Magnus Carlsen. Not that uh, black cannot uh, take on c3. Even though he can do ampersand here. Why? Because it was going to help Magnus to develop his knight. So instead Seji played uh, queen to e4 check. Then Magnus blocked with his bishop. The knight to f6 was played by Seji bishop d3 was played by magnus carson attacking this queen on e4 then uh, sergi played queen g4 d5 was played by magnus attacking the knight the knight b8 was played by sergi h3 by magnus chasing away the queen and in this position the queen is almost trapped because it only has two safe squares where it can go to the queen can go to h5 or it can passively go back to d7 but sergi for whatever reason even though he had more time on the clock decided to capture on g2 and that's how his queen was trapped not that the queen cannot go to g3 g4 or g5 or g6 it cannot go anywhere and uh, this knight is also protected by our queen and this is how quickly you can win in some games using the wing gambit now you guys listen magnus carlsen went on to win the game so easily in just 18 moves okay next game so in this game, Magnus Carlsen was playing against another strong GM by the nickname Grizzly Bear 79 and this was played on leeches. He was rated 3000 at the time. So who is a Grizzly Bear? According to the little research that I did, and I hope I'm not wrong, you can do some research on your own. I discovered that uh, Grizzly Bear 79 goes by the real names Paham Maxudlu. I bet I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I am not, please uh, pardon me again. I don't know what language this is. But all I know about uh, Paham is that he is an Iranian chess player. And uh, he was awarded the title of Grandmaster by FIDE in 2016. His uh, current FIDE rating is 26.99. So he's a very strong GM and a very brilliant guy. So again, Magnus started with e4, then uh, Paham responded with c5. Now, this time, Magnus Carlsen went pawn to b4, just uh, playing the wing gambit, and Paham did not take on b4. Instead, he played pawn to d6. And this would be a very good example of what to do if black does not take. If black does not take, well, take the pawn. If black takes on c5, now it is black who has one center pawn, unless we still have our d pawn. The idea here is just to go pawn to c3 and pawn to d4, just having two center pawns. And the bishop will go to the b5 square at some later point. But Magnus Carlsen here played a different move, which was knight to c3. So this time Magnus Carlsen chooses to play in the uh, closed uh, Sicilian Grand Prix style. Aiming to go pawn to f4, knight to f3, and uh, maybe bishop to e2 or bishop to uh, b5 and pawn to d3. So let's see how Paham responded here. s6 by Paham just preventing a bishop to b5 or knight b5 and also intending to go b5 himself. So f4 was played by Magnus Carlsen in the Grand Prix style. Knight c6 was played by Paham f4 by magnus e6 by paham knight f3 knight g e7 e5 by magnus carlsen g6 knight to e4 knight d5 c4 attacking the knight and so the knight should choose where to go to next now before i go any further you can see again 
Magnus Carlsen has two strong center pawns here. He has the F and the E pawn. So again, he's showing you the power of uh, the wing gambit. He's showing you how to play the wing gambit. In the previous games, you saw Magnus uh, having the C, D and E pawns on the center but this time he has the e and the f pawns look how he's dominating the sicilian with his center pawn so we do not uh, really care much about uh, the pawns on the queen side because they do not go anywhere so in this position the best continuation would have been knight to b4 and like what happened in the actual game because now uh paham took on f4 which was a mistake why because of knight to f6 check but Magnus, first of all, played d4, attacking the queen on f4. The knight went to h5, then immediately Magnus Carlsen played g4. <laughs> and you guys, that's why I said the wing gambit is uh, tricky and not simple as uh, many people put it. Because the best response here should be point to f5, which was not played in this game what if black plays knight to g7 which is a normal move knight f6 check king e7 d5 knight takes on e5 by magnus carlsen and if king takes on f6 thinking he has just captured our free knight then magnus here i bet he would have unleashed a beautiful move bishop g5 check attacking the queen not that the king cannot capture the knight because he's going to lose the queen so and so you would see black taking on g5 from here and then knight to f7 check forking the queen and the king seals the deal so unlike what happened in the actual game black was supposed to go pawn to f5 if he wanted to equalize the game after which magnus would have taken on f6 ampersand then knight takes on f6 by black knight takes on f6 check by magnus carlsen queen takes on f6 bishop g5 attacking the queen queen f7 bishop g2 by magnus carlsen bishop g7 castle shot castle shot d5 e takes on d5 c takes on d5 knight b4 knight e5 queen e8 by uh, paham rook takes on f8 check queen takes on f8 queen e2 and white is better so in the game paham played bishop e7 and that's how he lost the knight on h5 now from here the game was very tricky even though paham managed to get back his piece he still went on to lose because he spent so much time trying to get back his piece giving away the positional advantage to magnus carlsen and you know what magnus carlsen can do if he has a better position anyways the link for this game is in the description down below you can check it out let's move on to another game now in this game magnus carlsen is playing against a very 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 strong gm in my opinion he goes by the nickname rebecca harris a 3074 rated GM on leeches, but in real life, this is none other than GM Daniel Narodiski, also known as Dania. Is an American GM whose current uh, feeder rating is 2616. As you can tell, he's a very strong GM, not one to mess with. So, as usual, Carson started with pawn to e4, then Dania responded with c5. B4 by Magnus was played even against this strong GM. Daniel took on b4, then a3 was played by Magnus, just a normal wing gambit, martial variation, then d5 by Dania. So you see that uh, there are many responses that black can choose against the wing gambit because they have realized they are no longer playing the normal Sicilian. So again, we see Magnus taking on d5, queen takes on d5, knight f3, e5, c4, queen d8, bishop b2, e4 by Dania. Queen e2 by Magnus Carlsen just spinning that pawn. Knight f6 a developing move. d4 by Magnus Carlsen. b takes on a3. Then Magnus Carlsen here took with the knight and not the bishop. Remember I mentioned something like this in, in, in my previous video. If black's bishop is open along this diagonal, you do not have to take with the bishop. Instead take with the knight because you don't want to exchange bishops as early as uh, move 9. So that's why Magnus took on a3 with the knight and now you can see this time it is not the e and the f pawn by Magnus, it is the c and the d pawn. So the center pawns are very important in the wing gambit and you should strengthen them by all costs. You should not, once you lose one of these center pawns unnecessarily, then forget about it. 
So bishop b4 check by Dania, then knight d2 by Magnus Carlsen, uh, Dania castled short, knight c2 by Magnus attacking the bishop on b4, so Dania played bishop d6 just retrieving the bishop, g3 was played by Magnus Carlsen, knight c6, bishop g2 fiancaring the bishop, rook e8 by Dania, castle short by Magnus Carlsen, bishop f5, rook f e1, bishop g6 by Dania, Knight e3 by Magnus Carlsen, Knight b4, Bishop c3, Knight d3, Rook e b1 attacking the b7 square, then Magnus played Queen to d7, d5 was played. See how these pawns are getting stronger and stronger, I mean the c and the d pawn. So Bishop e5 was played by Dania, Bishop takes, Knight takes, Knight to b3 by Magnus Carlsen, b6 by Dania, then Knight d4 by Magnus Carlsen, now hold on. Just look at how beautifully coordinated Carlsen's pieces are in this position. Even though black is up a pawn, this a pawn is not going anywhere. This is like we are playing the Bengo Gambit in reverse. So black played rook ac8, h4 by Magnus Carlsen. Again, this h4 pawn is aimed at controlling the g5 square. Bishop h5 was played by Dania. Queen a2. Knight b5 forking the pawn on a7 and the rook on c7. Rook c5 by Dania and then Magnus took on a7. Here Dania played the natural move knight takes on c4 and after knight takes on c4 by Magnus, Dania took the other knight on b5. Thinking if rook takes on b5, queen takes on b5, his position is going to be fine forgetting that knight to d6 is a fork, forking the queen and the rook. So after queen takes on d5, knight takes on e8, knight takes on e8, this time Magnus Carlsen started applying the reduction method. Now this is where you start exchanging pieces, you start trading the pieces if and only if you have an advantage. And that's what Magnus Carlsen started doing here. So Magnus Carlsen, to simplify things further, he should have gone queen to a8, just attacking the knight and the queen. But here he played something else which was also reasonable. Magnus played queen e7 asking where that poor knight is going to go. So queen e6 was played by Dania. Magnus took on e6, f takes on e6, bishop takes on e4, and white is winning. Because these pawns are just too weak. Dania went on to lose uh, his pawns and also went on to lose the game. The idea is just to start exchanging as many pieces as possible and, uh, you know, take all of uh, Black's pawns. Okay, so last game. This was the game between Magnus Carlsen and Ali Reza. So GM Ali Reza is an Iranian-French GM who is currently rated 28-04 FIDE and holds the number three a position in the FIDE World Chess Rankings. And I hope by the end of this video, again, you are going to be brave enough to start using the wing gambit even against uh, the strong players out there because it is such a cool opening. I do not see many downfalls of the wing gambit, honestly speaking. So as usual, pawn to e4 by Magnus Carlsen, then c5 by Ali Reza and Magnus Carlsen played b4 again the wing gambit. So Ali Reza took on b4, a3 was played by by Magnus. So you see, Magnus is just playing the same setups. So this is more like a system again, if you think about it, if you come to think about it, because uh, you are not doing more of uh, thinking, you are just uh, following the move order, like how the moves go in the wing gambit. B3 was played by Ali Reza. So now we are not even down any pawn. So Magnus played C4 in this position. D5 was played by Ali Reza. Then C takes on D5. And again, you can see these two strong center pawns by Magnus Carlsen. Now, <laughs> E6 was played by Ali Reza here. Knight to C3 was played by Magnus here, just developing the knight. E takes D5. Knight takes on D5. Knight F6 by Ali Reza b5 check by Magnus Carlsen, knight to c6 blocking the check and in this position Magnus Carlsen if he wanted he would have taken on f6 but that would have just helped black to develop his queen on f6 and indirectly attacking our rook on a1 and that's why in this position Magnus took on b3 with his queen. So bishop e6 was played by Ali Reza just pinning this knight on uh, d5. So nevertheless, Magnus still took on f6 with check, then black took uh, on f6 with the queen attacking 
Carson's rook on a1. Queen c3 was played by Magnus intending to exchange queens and uh, that is okay for white in this position. But Alireza played queen to g6 just attacking the pawn on g2. Bishop takes check. B takes on c6. Queen takes on c6 check attacking the rook. King e7. Now hold on. If Magnus took on a8 that was going to be a blunder because remember that Alireza is still eyeing the g2 square so he would have taken on g2 and take the rook and take the knight and go on to win the game and because of that Magnus Carlsen played knight to e2 rook c8 was played by Alireza queen b7 check king e8 knight a4 attacking the queen and also protecting the g2 square knight to g4 by black knight takes on e6 queen takes on e6 castle shot by white bishop d6 by alireza then d4 by magnus castle now hold on we need to pause a little bit right here let's see who has a better pawn structure here so you can see that magnus Carlsen has uh, two powerful center pawns on the center. Again, you've seen the power of the wing gambit. It's all about the center pawns, guys. Whatever you do, just make sure that your center pawns are in perfect order and they are protected. Not to mention the space advantage by white. So, rook c7 was played by Alireza just uh, trying to harass the queen. Then queen b8 check, rook c8, queen b5 check, queen d7, then queen d3 by Magnus Carlsen. f6 was played by Alireza. It doesn't even matter even if he castles because he's behind by many moves. So bishop e3 by Magnus, king f7 by Alireza, f4 by Magnus Carlsen. Now it's no longer two pawns on the center. It's now three pawns. Rook h d8 was played by black. e5 by Magnus Carlsen attacking the bishop and also the pawn. Bishop f8 was played. Now it's no longer six pawns against four. It's now six pawns against Three. Queen d5 was played by Ali Reza, then rook a e1, after which Ali Reza responded with rook to c3. f5 was played by Magnus. See how those pawns are going. f takes on e5 by Ali Reza, then in this position, Magnus Carlsen unleashed the move f6 and Ali Reza resigned. Because there's a discovery coming with uh, pawn takes on g7, check. And whatever black is going to do, he is going to lose. For example, if king e8 by Alireza, f takes on g7, bishop e7, then the pawn promotes. And black's queen is dead. So guys, now you see how powerful the wing gambit is. And I hope this will give you much confidence to play against, to play against strong chess players using the wing gambit. I use this all the time against chess players, I should say. And in the near future, I'll make another video demonstrating how I beat strong players using the wing gambit. Okay, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, once again, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. Leave your comments down below. I'll be reading all of them. And I hope to see you soon in the next video. So see you in the next video.